In this tutorial, we're taking a look at how we can create a very cinematic looking grade by using the YUV color space in a parallel node configuration. I have been postponing this topic for way too long because it is quite difficult to explain. That is why this video is not three or five minutes in length, but probably going to be a lot longer. So if you're serious about learning this skill and you know you really want to level up your color grading game, then stick around till the end of this video, make notes, ask me questions in the comments and all that good stuff because you know, a new skill takes time to learn. So in this first color grading tutorial, we're going to address clips that are shot around sunset and sunrise, so very warm images. It is done in Resolve 17 and I'm using my keyboard shortcuts, which you can download for free in the link below. Um, with that being said, let's not waste any more time and start grading. All right, guys, so I will leave a couple clips that I use in this project on my website for free for you to download so you can follow along with this tutorial properly. Uh, they're in raw, so you have full flexibility. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is build our node tree. Yeah, so click Alt S a couple times, nine times. Um, and then if you have my keyboard shortcuts installed, you can press tab to rename the nodes. Otherwise, you can note label. If you don't want to, you can skip this part. So the first one is noise reduction. The second one is EXP for exposure. This one is color space transform. This is your white balance. This is contrast. That is grade. This is your fix. That is, what was again, sharp. And this is grain. All right. So I always work with parallel nodes. This is a nice and easy way to um, you know, keep your grade together in one pile of nodes. You do that by selecting the grade node and press Alt P three times because I am going to make a grade um, that consists of three different uh, adjustments. Okay, if you have more adjustments, it's, it's wise to create more nodes and to just have one particular adjustment on one note. So you can easily take it off, take it, put it on, so you can you know see what kind of difference each node makes. All right, so let's start at the beginning. Uh, go to your motion effects, then add in the frames. I do three usually, make it uh, better, and then choose a value between eight and 12. All right, um, you don't really see a difference now. You can see a difference in the scopes though. Yeah, so that's nice. The reason why we do noise reduction first is because it, you know, it gives us a clean output to grade upon, yeah. So the exposure is quite difficult to do now because there's not too much um, color going on and the more contrast we add in, the more um, the image gets stretched out. You can easily do the uh, exposure or the primary adjustments whenever you've you know added some saturation or contrast. Go to your open effects while highlighting the CST node, drag color space transform tool on to your CST node. Go to your input color space and then, you know, put in whatever you choose to use. In my case, this is Blackmagic RAW or Blackmagic Film. Uh, if you use a different camera, make sure you uh, you use your manufacturer, um, like input color space and gamma, all right? So your output color space and output gamma are Rec. 709. If you want to grade in a different color space, for example, Log C, you can do that as well, but then you need another color space from, from later down your node tree and, um, you know, you know, get it back from log C into Rec. 709 if you upload it to YouTube. All right, but that's a bit too advanced for now. The white balance is quite good, so we leave that for now. Contrast, we go over to the color wheels and then put in some contrast by upping the slider here. I like to use the slider because it gives me a little bit more control, like easier control than the curves. It is faster also. And then use the pivot to, uh, Make sure that the midpoint of your image is correct. Yeah, so right about here. All right, cool. Next, we are starting to grade. This is the most fun part. Um, I'm going to use the color space YUV. And I do this because it is working with colors differently than you would normally have. So for example, we go to our uh, RGB mixer and we pull the blue the up or down. Okay, check what happens. Yeah, so 
the colors are just changing in a way you would expect it to change. Now, let's click, right click, go to color space and then change it to YUV. Check what happens. The colors change completely different. So this is uh, this is useful for us because this is a shot shot around uh, sunset. So we have a lot of warm tones. Yeah. And by upping this blue layer, you can see that the warm tones are exaggerated. And that is exactly what I want here. So drag up the blue layer and then drag down the green layer a little bit. Go to the green output and drag up the blue layer to take a little bit of luminance out of it so it's not too intense and then drag down the green layer. Now, Command D to deselect this node so you can see what kind of change you've made. That is pretty interesting. Now, I feel like we can add a little bit more color back, so. Yeah, there we go. That's rad, all right, cool. The next one is a um, saturation adjustment. So go to your curves, go to the third dot, this is your U versus saturation slider, and then you know, drag down the reds ever so slightly, and then make another dot, put it around the green ones, and make another dot, put it around magenta. This just takes out a little bit of the color so it's not too intense. And then you can play around with the U versus U slider as well, if you like that, you know, to give give it a little bit more of a, a reddish look. Um, but that's totally up to you. Nice. Cool. All right. So the last one is um, a color separation. Yeah. So, for example, the orange and teal look, you know, which is widely used in pretty much 90% of the Hollywood movies, um, is it is basically a color separation that is done by using complementary colors. So if we go over to the color wheels and we check what colors are on the color wheel, you see that the orange and red colors are complementary of the cyan and blue, exactly what the orange and teal look is. So we're gonna use this to our advantage because we have a lot of orange colors in the frame already. So highlighting the last node, go to your log wheels and then drag in a bit of cyan, yeah. All right, now go to your low range, which is this uh, slider, drag it down to zero all the way. Now there's nothing going on. Slowly start adding a bit of blue in until you think it gives a little bit more contrast uh, a little bit more contrast that's it okay so what i'm looking at is the water here yeah so I, if I, oh come on see yeah if i take it off uh command d you can see that there's there is a change and this just sort of separates it a little bit from the rest of the image you see that all right, so the next one is our fix. So, you know, having blue in the shadows is nice, but I want to have my blacks to remain black. So that's what we're gonna do here. Go to the second to last dot and make it a, uh, a dot on the first line and drag the first dot all the way down. This will make sure that there is still some blues in the shadows, but the blacks will remain black. All right, cool. Now we add some sharpening. Go to your sharpening tool, sharpening, sharpen, blah, blah, blah. And then drag it down to 0.48, which is my magic number. And then for the grain, we go over to open effects. There we go. Scroll all the way down. And then film grain, add it up there. And go down to 35mm 400T. And then the grain size, you can play around with it until you're sort of satisfied with what you're seeing. It's difficult to see sometimes, but it's definitely there. I'm not gonna play it because my computer will definitely not uh, work. <laughs> now we have a nice and even image. So now we can play around with the exposure tools. So go back to your color wheels, back to wheels, and then slowly drag down the blacks until they're nice and dark, not not clipped, but dark, and then up the highlights a little bit again. Okay, so now that we have done that, you see that the image is too contrasty. So go back to the contrast tool and then take out a little bit of contrast and play around with a pivot. 
that's it. All right, cool. Nice. Okay, so this is basically what we end up with. And it is a very saturated image, but that is because we only had like 30 minutes of light left. So it was a very warm tone. Um, of course, if you don't like this, you can always go to the middle slider, uh, the middle node and take out a bit more saturation on the third dot, if that is something that suits your style better. Yeah. So let's do this. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit more even. I don't really like this adjustment. No. All right, so let's copy this one over. So right click, grab still, and check what this, this gray that we've just created does on different clips. So let's go over to a surf clip right here. Sweet. Right click on the still, apply grade, and here you go. That looks pretty damn cool, I must say. All right, so of course you can do some adjustments until you're completely satisfied, but I think this looks kind of cool. All right, so let's see what it does to the cow. Look at that cute face. Oh, Right click, apply grade. Bam, that is sick. Let's take the grade off and see what, we, uh, what we've just created. So this is Rec 709 and this is our grade. That's pretty cool. We can, of course, enhance the colors a little bit. So the cow's um, fur or like hair is a little bit more poppy, but like, uh, it's a bit too much. Hold on. Whoa, my computer is lagging. I'm gonna take off the grain for a bit because noise reduction in grain because my computer is just lagging like crazy. There we go. Sweet. Okay, now let's see what it does if we add this to a Panasonic clip. Yeah, so this is shot on a Panasonic S1 with the 85 millimeter uh, 1.4, I guess. Let's apply this grade. Then go over to the CST tool and then add in Pana and another Pana. Bam. And there you go, you have a lot more contrast. Now, let's go over to the saturation because I actually like the saturation in this shot. So let's boost it instead of um, reducing it. And that is it, Let, that looks so sick. We can even make it a little bit more red, you know, in the YUV uh, sliders. Don't overdo it though. I think right about there. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, maybe we can do one more. This is a DJI clip. Um, it's a DJI Mavic 2 Pro. Let's add in a little bit more exposure, like add a little bit more highlights to this image and then um, take out a little bit of the red because it's a bit too intense. And here, you know, the sliders, the U versus saturation. I think this is a bit too much. So look where we where we started. Alt D and then Alt D again. That is pretty impressive in, in a matter of seconds. So this is nice and we ooh, we didn't even change the color space transform tool. DJI. This will probably add a lot more saturation. Yeah, a lot more contrast. Okay, so let's go over to the exposure tool again and let's add in a bit more. Uh, exposure. Nice. Okay, cool. So another quick tip is if your computer is lagging like this, maybe um, deselect the grain and the noise reduction and then select it whenever you're done. Or you can leave the noise reduction on and just don't add the grain here. But what you can do is, for example, uh, select a few clips like this one and this one add into new group, call this uh, animals, and then go over to, uh, while selecting this clip, go over to the last, uh, second to last dot over here, which is group post clip. You can add the grain here and it will add the grain to all the clips within this group. Yeah, so that, you know, 
if you're just doing one project, you can add it to all the clips at once, you know, in a group. But if you have different kinds of uh, situations or, or, you know, you can just uh, make a group for each um, sequence, let's say. All right. All right, guys, I think that's it. I don't really, you know, I need to quit. Otherwise, I'll probably keep on talking for two hours. So uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you know, let them know in the comments below. I would love to help. Usually uh, respond within 10 minutes. So um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. This is something that I use for pretty much like 70% of all the work that I do. Um, and especially this note tree, you know, this is a very clean and uh, easy to use note tree, which which is so helpful because I've worked on projects like, you know, with other colorists with 30 notes or even more and um, you just lose sight completely. So um, make sure you just try to keep your note tree clean and, you know, try to develop a note tree that really works for you. And um, with that being said, you know, I'll... Uh, I'll say goodbye now and see you next week. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, enjoy color grading. <laughs>